Okay, is the full screen available, visible yes. to everyone? Yes, sir. It's a perfectly fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the title of presentation is Wildlife Forensics, the challenges and the way forward ahead to deal with them. So, I will start with the famous quote uh, by Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of United States of America. He says that law without enforcement is just a good advice. So I hope everyone will agree with this, this quote that law, if it is without enforcement, it is not going to serve any purpose. Rather, it's going to be a, just an advice. So in the implementation of uh, the law, forensic science plays a very important role. So one of the field, one of the uh, field in forensics, that's the wildlife forensics, and uh, in this field of forensics, we deal with the enforcement of various laws related with the conservation of wildlife. So everyone is concerned about the decline in, in, in the wildlife population. And uh, in fact, conservation of wildlife is a global concern. And uh, we know very well that uh, wildlife is a very important natural resource, like so many other natural resources, and it's a renewable natural resource. But uh, because of its overexploitation and uh, because of mm, human interference, a rapid decline has been experienced, particularly in the last century or so. And the human interference is primarily because of its ever increasing population and its never ending needs. In addition to this, uh, the pollution is the other, other interference which has been uh, created by the human being may it be the land, may it be the water, may it be the air, all ecosystems have been um, polluted by the, by the mankind and it is putting a severe pressure on the, on the wildlife to sustain their life, to sustain their species. And uh, this is not the end to the problems and uh, it has led to the, either the complete loss of their natural habitat or it has fragmented their natural habitat. And one major threat, direct threat to the survival of wild species is the poaching, that is the illegal hunting. And it has been experienced in last 40, 50 years, uh, I should say. And before that, it was just for the purpose of the needs, but the commercial aspect of, of, of wildlife, related to wildlife, it has made the matter worse. So every year, a large number of wild animals is posed for a, for a variety of products obtained from them. And uh, they are posed for, for food, for the purpose of sport, for the purpose of trade. And uh, the illegal trade in, in these wild animals and their parts, it has rendered various wild species endangered. So uh, these are the various body parts of, of wild animals which are into the wildlife trade. Firstly, the hair in the form of skin, fur, wool, then the meat, antlers, horns, glands like musk pod, and the bear bile. Bear bile means the gallbladder of the bear, claws, teeth, ivory, bone, shells, feathers, and uh, whatnot. And further, these body parts are uh, encountered in highly processed and finished products like traditional Chinese medicine, leather bags, purses, trophies, ornaments, combs, brushes, glass frames, and so on. These are some articles made out of skin skill, snake skin, and uh, how large this form of crime is. You would be surprised to know that <clears throat> around 25,000 to 30,000 primates every year, they are pumped into this form of crime. Nine to 10 million orchids. Orchids are the beautiful flowering plants. Two to five million birds approximately 10 million reptile skins, around 15 million furs, seven to eight million cacti, and over 500 million fish. So these are some striking numbers, right? So from here, from these graphics, you would see that almost every form of life, may it be mammals, may it be reptiles, other invertebrates, right? So they are pumped into this form of crime and uh, almost all body parts, they, they, they surprisingly find some, some, some reason to be in this uh, form of crime. So whole of this trade, it has been evaluated by the 
by the Europol and uh, as well as the UNODC that uh, this whole wildlife trade it goes to the tune of US dollar 53 billion every year right it is second only to the drug of uh, related to the illegal crime related to the drugs of abuse and it is comparable to the illegal trade uh, related to the firearms and it is far more it is far more than the counterfeit goods human smuggling counterfeit drugs cyber crimes and so on but problem is that majority of the 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 people even the even the officials in the governments high ups they are not aware about this particular form of crime and hardly any any step is uh, is taken in, in many countries to to arrest this form of crime and this huge amount of money which goes to the tune of around us dollar 53 billion where it goes it goes to sponsor other forms of crime right it is used to fuel other forms of organized crimes particularly <clears throat> the drugs and arms trade and it is also alleged to fund the terrorist activities so <clears throat> this form of crime uh, not only pose a threat to our environment to the ecosystem to the health of ecosystem but also to the general security of many nations so in india in order to uh, provide protection to the wildlife government of india enacted the wildlife protection act in the year 1972 so various species depending upon the degree of their endangerment they have been listed in in six schedules 1 2 3 4 and 6 right so schedule 1 the critically endangered species are listed and uh, and so on they are kept in schedule 2 3 4 and in the schedule 6 there are the plants and uh, schedule 5 here it's not mentioned because in the schedule 5 the vermin species they are listed means those form of life which pose a threat to the to the human life they may spread diseases and uh, other things they can be killed no doubt they may be wild but they can be <clears throat> killed so they are listed in the schedule 5 so around 100 uh, around 915 species have been provided protection under this act and this act take care of regulation of hunting uh, the protection to the wild species and control of trade in the wildlife products and the same time it also prescribes the penalties for the Uh, offenses <clears throat> so since this form of crime it is trans border it is at the international level it is global so in order to arrest this trade to check this trade there is a international treaty that is cites the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna and it was signed uh, in washington dc on 3rd of march 1973 currently around 183 countries are signatory to it India became signatory to CITES in the year 1976 approximately 5000 animal and 29000 plant species have been listed in three appendices that is 1 2 and 3 uh, the species registered in appendix 1 are banned from any such trade except for scientific research and other specific purposes means you have to obtain license in order to procure the the animals which are listed in the appendix 1 or their body parts otherwise it is it is completely banned so what is the need of forensic science here for the successful implementation of these laws means laws related to the protection and conservation of wildlife it is mandatory to identify the species correctly identify the species means the the species which has been either posed from the the trace materials or the physical evidence Uh, recovered in this type of the cases along with the 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 products related to this trade uh, you have to identify the species correctly because uh, the punishment the whole case depends upon the correct identification of species if the species is protected one then it amounts to an offense if it is not protected one it is domesticated one then it doesn't amount to an offense so you have to identify the species correctly but unfortunately majority of the wildlife related uh, cases they fail in court of law reason being the lack of evidence against the perpetrators against the perpetrators and the reason behind the lack of evidence is the lack of forensic science facility in our country and to a larger level at the international level as well so in india we can count on fingers uh, the labs which have which have been equipped to deal with this type of the the cases we have very limited number of 
the facilities as well as very limited uh, expertise, manpower related to uh, wildlife forensics. <clears throat> so as I mentioned that there are around 915 species which have been listed in the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So uh, it won't be possible for me to discuss each and every species here, but uh, I would quickly go through uh, the critically, some of the critically endangered species which need immediate attention of everyone. The first one is none other than the Royal Bengal Tiger. It is our national animal, scientific name, you know that Panthera tigris tigris. And this is one of the most beautiful and charismatic animal. And uh, it's also a symbol of strength. So these two characteristics of this animal has made it the target of poachers. And primarily it's posed for its beautiful skin and uh, its body parts, particularly the bones. They are most sought after in the traditional Chinese medicine. It is also posed for its claws, canines, meat, fat, eyeballs, and even penis. They are in demand. And uh, only around 2,900 9, they are left. So tiger skins and hats, they are used to make trophies. Tiger claws and canines, they are used as talismas. Tiger bones and skulls are used in the traditional oriental medicine. Tiger fat is used in balms and lotions. Tiger penis is used as aphrodisiac. So these are some pictures related to the exploitation of tiger. So according to this report by traffic and WWF, that tiger has been reduced to skin and bones. This is analysis of seizures from 2000 to 2015. Right, from here you can say around of total 540 seizures by the law enforcement agencies, 365 were related to the tiger only. So this is the trend across the Indo-Pacific region, you can see. Okay, so uh, it, it needs immediate attention of everyone to arrest the crime related to the tiger, Royal Bengal, Royal Bengal tiger and its uh, products. So in India, we have uh, 14 cats, wild cats, which have been provided protection. And out of these 14, 13 are uh, provided protection under the schedule one means 13, they are critically endangered. The 14th one being the jungle cat. So this type of the cases, they are generally encountered. This is a genuine skin, right, of tiger. And sometimes the fake skins of tiger, they are also into the trade and they also uh, need to be identified correctly. So this is how the tiger hair look like. This is of leopard and we can easily differentiate them using their uh, microscopic characteristics like cuticle scale pattern, medulla and the cross section. Next species, which is critically endangered, that is the Tibetan antelope and uh, locally referred as Chiru. Scientific name is the Pantholops oxoni. And uh, this animal, uh, it is endemic to Tibetan plate. And endemic means it is restricted only to the Tibetan plate and surrounding areas. And uh, this animal lives at an altitude of more than 13,000 above mean sea, uh, mean sea level. And uh, over the period of time in order to adapt in this harsh cold climate, this has developed a fur, very, very soft, very warm, fur over its body, which is referred as Shatush. Shatush is a Persian word, uh, li which literally means king of the wool. Shah means king, Tush means wool. So this wool is used to weaving certain uh, woolen garments like shawls, scarves, right? A Shatush shawl famously, you know, common test is the, it's also referred as ring shawl because it can easily pass through the ring, te ring test, okay? But nowadays, the, the, the smugglers, the traders, the poachers, they become very smart. They mix shatush with pashmina. Pashmina is another form of very good quality wool, which is derived from another high altitude mammal, which is the pashmina goat, right? So shatush is mixed with pashmina and it is woven very loosely. And then it can pass this famous ring test. But thing is that, Shatush is a protected species and Pashmina, it's not a protected species. It is a domestic one, domesticated one. So you can have woolen articles made out of Pashmina. It's legal to possess them. But 
it is illegal to possess the any any woolen article made out of the shatush so if they are blended if they are mixed even 1% of the shatush if it is present in the woolen garment it amounts to an offense so identification of this type of the the fiber the the shatush fibers from this type of the woolen garments it's paramount for the successful implementation of law only around 150 gram of wool is procured from a single animal and in order to make a make a shawl of standard size right that is 2 by 1 meters uh, which weighs around 600 grams it it needs the blood of around 6 adult animals means 6 adult uh, panthropods hawksunai they are there posed in order to make a standard shatu shawl so prices of this shawl at the international market can can go up to us dollar 20000 each but this is a gray area this is a gray market black market the prices may vary from may vary from area to area totally dependent upon the simple law of economics that is the gap between the demand and supply if demand is high and supply is less prices will shoot up and vice versa so generally uh, the case is here we have to differentiate shatush from pashmina this is how the shatush looks like to the naked eye and this is pashmina almost similar creamish brown in color and around the against the dark background if you see the the guard hair if you take out of these wools they appear like this you see there are small undulations right but in case of pashmina there are large undulations large waves so it's it's a simple test but it's not a confirmatory test but it it can be only done from the guard hair but in case of the under fur right the guard hair they are not present and it's not easy it's not easy to differentiate the shatush from pashmina so for this purpose you need to go for the microscopic uh, examination to to go for the more confirmation again from the guard hair from the under wool it's very very difficult from the guard hair through microscopic examination you can easily differentiate shatush from pashmina look at the cuticle scale patterns here in this case that is a mosaic pattern and here in this case is a regular wave so you can differentiate so next species which is critically endangered that is the asian elephant in in world there are two species of elephants one is the asian which you can see here in this picture and another is the african one so in india and uh, in asia you will get the asian elephant so india take pride uh, in that that we are home india is a home to around half of the total population of asian elephant in the world so due to the high demand of asian ivory wide spread poaching had skewed the sex ratio and it is putting a very severe pressure on the sustenance of this species survival of this species because in asian elephant problem is that only the male they possess the tusk from the tusk the ivory is derived and from ivory different type of the ornament different type of the uh, ivory products they are made whereas in case of african elephant both the sexes they possess tusk so related to the asian elephant only only the male is selectively poached from the population so in india the major population the major elephant population is in the nilgiri hills in down south in india where its sex ratio was 1 is to 5 in the year 1981 means one male after five female and it has been reduced to one male for 25 females by the year 2005 and it is further declining right so you know it has put a severe pressure on the on the survival of this species because of this reason so these are the various products derived from the from the elephant ivory some more images so uh, whenever a item wild a product which is which is suspected for the presence of ivory first question is that whether it is an ivory or not right because fake material there are also available in the market because demand demand is so high so if you observe the the ivory under the stereo microscope you will see these type of the lines forming some angle it's not going to be smooth right fake ivory is more or less smooth but genuine ivory you will get this type of the lines these are called schriger lines named after the scientist who discovered these lines 
so second question is that whether it is uh, asian ivory or it is african ivory so uh, in this purpose same these lines they they help us they form some angle right so if the angle these regal lines which they are forming if it is less than 90 degree it is going to be a mammoth ivory whereas african and asian elephant ivory have angle greater than 105 degree right so mean shrigar angle values on the outer portion of the ivory is more than 120 degree in case of african ivory and it is less than 120 degree and less than and more than 105 degree in case of the asian elephant ivory okay so you can you can uh, determine whether it is from asia elephant or it's from the african elephant in order to go for more confirmation whether it is asian or african you can go for the elemental profile right so for this purpose we have certain instrumental techniques like x ray fluorescence inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy and the icp ms so by using uh, the x ray fluorescence 22 elements have been found in the elephant ivory and uh, strontium one of the element its intensity its concentration is far higher in case of african ivory right as compared to the asian ivory you can see the difference in the peak area right for strontium in case of asian ivory and in case of african ivory so larger peak area it indicates a more concentration of that particular element whereas another uh, element deuterium it is found uh, only in the asian ivory and it was not detectable in the in the african ivory so you can differentiate asian ivory from the african ivory and it was reported by singh et al in the year 2006 <clears throat> so sometimes uh, as i mentioned that fake ivory items they are also recovered like this so next species is the indian pea fowl it's our national bird pavocris status commonly the male is the peacock female is the peahen it comes under the schedule schedule 1 part 3 of the wildlife protection act 1973 the male has a metallic bronze green terrain of elongated tail feathers these tail feathers of the male pea fowl are known for their bright colors and patterns these have been known for the ornamental value since the time immemorial and surprisingly they also find some uses in the religious rituals across our country so tail feathers of the pea fowl peacock the male uh, they are naturally shed after the completion of breeding season which lasts from say june to the september in the monsoon season and after the completion of mating season it is shed naturally now thing with the law is that it is legal to possess the the shed feathers right it is allowed under the indian wildlife protection act under section 49a but it is illegal to possess the plucked feather their trade is completely banned it's an offense so thing is that the major question related to the pea fowl or the peacock feathers is that whether they are plucked or they are shed so answer lies at the at the root portion if you see here so uh, if you observe them examine them under the stereo microscope you see here the shed feathers they are they taper gradually towards the end whereas the plucked feathers they are not tapering gradually right and the end margins right they are inverted and here they are inverted because they are plucked right so this gives you an idea about whether they are shed or they are plucked and this study was reported by sajpal et al in the journal science and justice and apart from this this uh, this observation another thing is that a simple test for the presence of blood can be performed here right you know there are so many tests available for the to for the uh, detection of blood i need not to go into those like uh, <clears throat> phenofthalein test is there tmb is there you can perform there if those tests they they come positive here it indicates the presence of blood and presence of blood indicates what means they are plucked in case of shed feathers no traces of blood would be present another species is the pangolin the scaly anteater this is the most heavily trafficked mammal in the world right now there are eight species of pangolin in the world four are reported in the asia 
and rest four have been reported from Africa. So pangolin is a medium sized nocturnal elusive mammal which is covered with the scale. That's why name given scaly anteater. It feeds on the ants and its body is covered with the scales. So these are the four species uh, from the Asia, right? This one is the uh, second one here, B. This is the Indian pangolin. This is the Chinese pangolin. And these rest two are from the uh, Pacific region. Various body parts, especially the scales and its fetus, blood, bones, claws are believed to have medical properties, healing properties in the traditional medicine systems. Meat of pangolin is considered as a delicacy in a restaurant where its consumption is a symbol of status, particularly in China. So prices of pangolin scales in China have increased tenfold in the last decade and demand from China is believed to be the driving force behind the global trade. In 2013, the illegal pangolin trade in the Asia Pacific region has been estimated to the tune of US dollar 100 to 115 million only, only in the pangolin. Surprising. This is how it is, it is posed, how cruelly, brutally it is posed and how it is traded along in the gunny bags, along with the dog biscuits, along with the uh, ivory. And uh, this is how it is served. And this is the last scale poaching of the, of the pangolin. This is a jacket made out of the pangolin scales. Identification of pangolin from scales, accurate identification is critical, as I mentioned, for the regulation and enforcement of law. So uh, mitochondrial DNA, DNA-based identification of species, it is the, you can say, uh, the method of choice right now, most widely accepted across the globe is performed here. Another challenge which we are facing right now, that is the online trade. It has been titled like killing with the keystrokes. So online trade, it's prevalent right now in our society. There are so many uh, online or e-commerce websites available with us like Amazon, Alibaba, and so on. So uh, these platforms have been exploited by the criminal elements to, to indulge, to carry out this illegal trade in the wildlife. So recently a case has been cracked by CBI where certain wildlife items have been traded uh, with some code names in order to escape the law enforcement agencies and it was cracked by CBI. So this case, in this case, the double engine was the code name for the sand boa snake, four wheeler was for the tortoise, piage or onion for the bear bile, means the gallbladder of bear, Pipe for the ivory, alu or potato for the musk, dhari wala chadar means striped bed sheet for the tiger skin, chota dhari wala chadar means small striped bed sheet for the leopard skin. So the Bengal monitor lizard, monitor lizard, can you imagine? Uh, this is uh, traded online. It is it's posed for its bifurcated penis, also known as the hemi penis, commonly referred as the hatha jodi root. So this animal is protected under schedule one and uh, appendix one of the cites. It is peddled as a rare plant root on e-commerce sites as Hatha Jodi is claimed to possess magical properties, magical powers, which ensures pro prosperity to its owner. Buyers pay between Indian rupees 1200 to 2200 online according to the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau of India. Hatha Jodi Fake, they are also available, made out of wheat flour, and they are sold in India at uh, say rupees 500 a pair. So uh, recently, uh, it has been reported in Times of India, May 31st, 2017, in Brameshwar, Patna, 210 giant sex sexual organs of mountain lizard were seized. And another seizure was, seizures were made in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and Odisha, where 331 monitor lizard pencils have been uh, seized, and it was reported in the Indian Express. So, uh, uh, not on, only in India, but uh, in other countries, uh, this is a, a newspaper uh, cutting from a leading newspaper in India, where a snake bot online kills women in China, in the Shanxi province, in the, in the central China. This uh, lady ordered a snake crate to make snake wine. I don't know what's the, what's the reason behind it, but uh, when she opened the courier, 
the parcel then uh, the snake was alive and she was bitten by by the snake and she she was she died on the spot and that's why this particular case caught the media attention internationally so another very very severe form of crime is related to the bear in order to obtain its bile at least 20000 bears are estimated to be trapped in bear bile facilities across vietnam korea china laos and myanmar the bile is extracted through regular painful procedures meanwhile the animal this animal poor animal spends made to spend their entire life in the cages they are no longer than a telephone booth eating a natural diet and sporting constant injury in order to recover the bile so bear bile is unnecessarily added to various pharmaceutical preparations like hemorrhoid creams and certain beautifying products this is how uh, the bile is derived this is these are the gall bladders in the trade these are certain pills made out of the the bear bile these are the prices related to the gall bladder and the pills the international market so not only the plants uh, not only the animals there are certain plants which are also pumped into this form of uh, trade uh, basically for their ornamental values for their beautiful flowers or other other body parts one such species is the nepenthes cassiana the pitcher plant it is it is over poached it is uh, over exploited for its medicinal value another species is the soria costus commonly referred as gut its its uh, roots they are believed to have certain medicinal properties that's why it is exploited it is found in the state of jammu and kashmir in the western himalayas and it extends to the state of himachal pradesh and uttar pradesh right higher up higher up areas and uh, it is its its root contains an alkaloid so serine which contains some uh, antibacterial properties and that's why it is in the trade and kullu a city in the state of himachal pradesh it is believed to be the the hub of uh, trade related to kut another species is cycas bedomai it's a cycas ornamental plant the female plants due to their beautiful ovules the reproductive parts they are selectively poached from the from their natural habitat and this this particular plant it's endemic to eastern ghats in india in the state of andhra pradesh in particular so another species uh, they are the orchids beautiful beautiful flowering plants with very long shelf life right red venda blue venda and then another one is the paphiopodilum that's lady slipper orchid so this is a very beautiful flowering plant with shelf life 2 to 3 months so target of poachers and there are uh, nine species of of this genus paphiopodilum reported from india all these nine they have been provided protection under the schedule 6 right and out of these nine one is found in the in, in the kerala that is south india and rest eight they are restricted to the northeastern states of india so uh, uh whenever any any uh, product related to wildlife it's recovered as i mentioned that uh, forensically it is paramount to identify the species correctly so first job in this aspect is to assess the sample properly whether it is morphologically intact or not if it is morphologically intact means if it is morphology is intact like say for example tiger skull is there or some bone is there if it is intact then you can go for its morphological analysis you can compare that particular piece of bone or hair and other such material with the reference samples or with the reference database and then you can form a uh, report so why i am emphasizing on it because it's a non destructive approach and it's easy to perform comparatively but a major challenge here is that there is a uh, very limited amount of reference samples available the species which are into this this form of crime they are they are very large in number and the reference samples they are not in that number second thing is that these are species are by definition they are rare and access to their reference samples is is very 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 difficult and you need to have the samples um, say say if i i have given the example of tiger skull so you need the skull of of male tiger in sufficient number and you need the skull of female tiger as well in sufficient number and sometimes you also need the 
samples age wise right so but if the morphology is compromised if it is no longer intact if it is in the powdered form or the sample is in the stained form then of course obviously you cannot perform the morphological analysis then we go for the dna based analysis you know very well that the steps involved are the sample preparation first then dna extraction by using appropriate extraction method then the dna quantification is done in order to uh, check the quality and the quantity of the sample so that you can you can opt for uh, the appropriate markers right so here samples could be from any form of life if they are from the bacteria microorganisms then the the gene which is the method of choice right now for amplification and sequencing that is assisted as rna and in case of plants we have this combination of some markers right and they are uh, either present in the chloroplast dna or in the nuclear dna in case of animals we have a universal barcode region that is co1 in the mitochondrial dna uh, and then in case of fungi we have the its region in the nuclear dna so depending upon the sample from which form of life it has come then you you amplify it you do it sequencing if the sequences are readable then you put them to the database we have database internationally available like gene bank embl bold bold is the barcode of life database and uh, it contains sequences reference sequences related to the dna barcodes right so you can load your sequences there unknown sequences there you can compare with the database and uh, they will give you the the match with the particular species right and you can further get it verified with your own reference samples if you have related to that species but if the sequences are not readable so this type of the problem comes with the mixed samples degraded samples samples where low copy number dna is available so in this area we need to work a lot we need to develop some uh, taxon specific primers by using next generation uh, sequencing platforms in order to develop snapshots or mini sequences so this is a thing another thing which is uh, parallelly going up that is the vibrational spectroscopy and uh, in that we have the ir spectroscopy we have raman spectroscopy so one of uh, out of these two techniques atr fdr spectroscopy is picking up some pace in the in the last decade or so so advantages this technique offers is that it is uh, highly accurate it's reliable analysis is very very rapid within 5 to 10 minutes you will get you can complete your analysis then it is non destructive it's a very very big advantage because sample is not consumed during the analysis which is the case with the with the with the dna it is relatively inexpensive expensive because no chemical is required no no recurring cost is available here and because of this reason since no chemicals are used it is eco friendly it is futuristic it is green green technique and uh, for some of the samples no sample preparation is required so keeping uh, these things in view these advantages in view uh, my team here in collaboration with wildlife institute of india dehradun uh, we have developed some some methods uh, which are atr ftr spectroscopy based for the rapid and uh, non destructive identification of claws and uh, for the differentiation of shatush from pashmina so this uh, uh, this research work has been published in science and justice recently so i will throw some light how we differentiated shatush from pashmina i mentioned uh, earlier in my presentation that you need the guard hairs if you want to go for the microscopic examination dna based method is, is very very difficult to perform here because from the shaft you know it's very very difficult to get dna so here this is the uh, you know uh, the ir spectrum of the pashmina and the uh, chiru or the shatush wool blue in is the pashmina and in the red this is the shatush you see to the naked eye uh, all the prominent peaks maybe in the functional region functional group region or in the fingerprint region they, they are almost same because uh, there is no doubt because it's here of course and uh, it's from the high altitude mammals both of them so apart from uh, one to very very small peaks like this peak here majority of the peaks they are common so in order to 
go for go for uh, for the differentiation purpose we need to go for the signal points so that can be done only with the help of some chemometric tools so first thing was done with the principal component analysis you see here uh, in the red this is the pashmina and in the blue this is the shatush so fair differentiation was there but some of the uh, pashmina samples they were overlapping with the uh, with the with the shatush so it was not correct then we further modified the model we applied the plsda the partial least, least square discriminant analysis so by using this tool this model and 100% differentiation of shatush from pashmina was achieved and uh, we also subjected it to the internal as well as external validation external validation with the angura rabbit wool is another form of wool which is legal but it's it's uh, very much prevalent in the society to make the woolen garments so all three wools were easily differentiated from each other clear cut differentiation using this technique so uh, there are so many challenges in this uh, in this field of wildlife forensics first of all i mentioned that lower priority major reason is this uh, not only the law enforcement agencies not only the common man but the governments the policy makers the law makers for them wildlife related crime it, it is always at the lower priority as compared to the human related crime right because uh, you know the things because human they think that they are always the important i say that of course humans they are important but there the species we are also we are just a part of so many species present on this earth and every species is important they are playing some role in the ecosystem maybe we are not aware of the role a particular species is playing in the in the ecosystem but truth will come out as it is coming out with so many species so another thing is that lack of awareness wildlife forensic facility very limited huge number of species say in case of animals it goes up to 5000 in case of plant it's more than 29000 diverse range of samples and they are processed further right and last but not the least the reference samples for the purpose of identification through comparison so it's a big problem here to have reference samples in the sufficient number another thing is this health and safety safety issues be aware that wildlife specimens may carry zoonosis also called as zoonotic diseases the diseases which can pass from animals to the human beings and remember that risk of diseases may be greater in the illegally traded specimens so diseases carried out by animals include covid-19 you know very well which our generation has faced right now we are still suffering from it unable to come out of it others are the ebola marburg virus hepatitis a and b uh, green monkey disease simian deficiency virus monkey pox right now it's also coming up and there are well over 200 zoonotic diseases which have been reported so that's why uh, investigators and analysts must be properly trained and well equipped to handle this type of the samples so i would conclude with the observation that wildlife offenses are no different from any other form of crime and full range of forensic science expertise and support is required to solve them otherwise the scale and nature of illegal trade of wildlife poses a serious threat not only to the biodiversity but also to the human health and security of many nations so references and thank you so much for the patient hearing